Mark Magnifico Maxayo. Right over here, please. Face, facing me, right here. Facing me. Facing me. Good. Mark, right here, facing me. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. All right. These are good. These are good right now, Manny. They might come up a little bit, so I'm going to let them work right here. I got a righty against the lefty, so don't step on each other's feet if you can. And watch your heads. Please listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard. Fight clean. Good luck to both of you. For Rigoberto Hermosillon, there is Mark Maxayon. He said he's working on not being reckless and being smarter. For Rigoberto Hermosillon, he said everything is on the line in this fight. Everything. Hermosillo, a three-week replacement for Jose Heron, who stepped away from the sport, in steps in the southpaw, Rigoberto Hermosillo. Mark Maxayo, no stranger to having changes when he last fought here in the United States against Ramiro Robles. He said the exact same thing happened to him. Ooh, good right here, yeah, right off the bat by Maxayo. Nice left hook there by Maxayo. Mark Maxayo with a knockout percentage of 73%, but he is giving up three inches to Hermosillo. Ray Flores, Joe Goose, and Jordan Plan. He is, but he's got such quick feet. You see how he gets in and out very fast, Maxayo. So he'll make up for that reach by doing that. Uh, but, you know, here's one thing he's got to be careful for is leaving that left hand low against the southpaw. Nice straight right hand. Boy, he's got quick hands, doesn't he? By Maxayo. He's got quick hands, doesn't he? But look at this. Absolutely. But back comes Hermosillo. Hermosillo, since he was 13, has been calling Victorville, California his home. There's a straight left by Hermosillo. And, you know, Hermosillo, you know, obviously, you know, he's a he's a rugged guy. And, and uh, even when he was fighting Manny Robles, who had him down in the first round, he came back and rallied in that fight to make it a close fight, undefeated Manny Robles. So, uh, you know, Hermosillo's a very durable guy. He's going to go to that liver with that left hand, okay? He's a southpaw. His strong hand is his left hand. And he's going to try to hit that body a lot with that left hand right under that rib cage, under the right elbow of uh, Maxile there. That's his favorite punch. He Boy. There's a whipping right cross by he, Maxayo. He whipped that right into the body of Hermosillo. So, and there's that right hook by Hermosillo. And it's going to something I'm going to talk about in the keys to victory. There's a straight right that backed up Hermosillo. Two big right hands clobbering Hermosillo. Man, is this kid quick, uh, Maxayo, isn't he? Oh, he is very fluid and fast, but back comes the Mexican in Hermosillo. I can already see the improvement with his uh, tutelage under Freddie Roach right now because in a few fights that we I had seen on tape, he was a little bit wide, he was wasting punches, none of that here. He looked sharper, crisper. You see that little left hook he tried to drop in over that right hand of Hermosillo? I like what I see right now. Well, you mentioned about how wild Maxayo has been in the past four years ago. Big right hand that backed up Hermosillo. He clocked hurt. him. He, he had him rocked. Boy, if he hits him again with something sharp like that. Could be lights out. Well, at least get, you know, he might put him down. But I, I got to tell you, that really wobbled him. We'll see him. But that, that's the quick hands of Max Isle, man. He's just really, it's lightning fast. 25 years old from the Philippines, but back comes Edmo Seal. Edmo Seal has a little bit of blood outside of his right eyebrow. That ends the first. Wow. Let's take a look, the power punching from Maxayo. What force behind that right hand, Joe? Well, see, look, Maxayo went to the body, uh, uh, went to the body with that left hand to the liver, and of course, Maxayo countered right hand up next to his chin when he's going to the body with the liver shots from his left hand side. And then when he's close, he's got to hit the body hard, but he's got to protect himself. Well, for Mark Maxayo, he's hoping to follow in the footsteps of his idol, Manny Pacquiao, and become a world champion. Pacquiao took a liking to Maxayo and feels that he can be a ranks to riches story, much like what he's been able to do. And 
Baltimore. The Philippines certainly being well represented. John Real Casimero victorious last week. And here this week, we see the unbeaten featherweight contender in Maxayo. Maxayo just whistled another counter right hand right past the uh, the left hand that uh, Hermosillo threw in there. He, luckily, he pulled his head out just in time. But, man, he's really looking to counter, and he's quick with his counters, Maxayo. See, there's the body work I was talking about. When you get in close, you got to do some damage because he got hurt uh, by Chris Avilos, Maxayo did, to the body and got dropped by him. He was he, dropped in the third round. That's right. So, you know, he can't be hurt himself. And look, well, you saw Max I, he just kind of pointed down to his trunks like that left hand was low, which it wasn't. It was a good straight body shot by Ermo Seal right in the belly. Blistering hand speed, that right continues to hammer away upon Ermo Seal. But back comes the 28-year-old from Jalisco, and he ate a left hook. That's right, he's good. Forward. That's right, that left hook is what I said. He's really dangerous with that left hand. Here you go, did you get any cut? Uh-oh, well. No, I got a head butt, no blood. Time in. Midway point of the second, a clash of heads, inadvertent. Well, Jack Reese, the referees. Oh, good luck, Sam. Left left seal. And Jack Reese did a very good job to go in there, make sure they were both taken care of. So behind right. you like that. As you pointed out, Joe, against Max Sion, for Max Sion, he's been on the deck just once against Chris Avalos, but he would go back to finish him off in the sixth round. That was in the Philippines in front of nearly 30,000. That's right. It was a tremendous comeback. Because look, it looked like he got tired after the second round, Max Sion, because he threw so many wasted punches. And uh, then, you know, Chris Avalos, being the great fighter he was, really went to the body hard and drained him even more and then was able to drop him. But uh, Max Sio being the competitor and, and great fighter as he came back to stop Chris Avilos in that fight. Which shows his heart and determination. Well, and Max Sayo's coming off of a 13-month layoff. He defeated Panyo Utak, who was a former world champion on two of the three scorecards in that fight on August 31st of last year. It was a shutout. So Max Sayo's certainly getting better in trying to crack and get closer to a world title shot. Yeah, and, and the record for uh, Utak was uh, like 53 and 6. I mean, he had a heck of a record. Max Sayo certainly not afraid to test his skills against high-level opposition. Final moments of the second, but punches towards Max Sayo. Here's that straight left boom. Max Sayo took it well. On to the third. And Rigoberto Hermosillo going at it. Joe, this has been a very entertaining matchup thus far. It's a dangerous fight for both guys because both guys are really good. And let me tell you something. Max Sayo is reacting to that straight left hand that Hermosillo is throwing right into his belly. Every time Hermosillo throws that straight left hand down there, and Jack may say some race about that, but it hit the belt line, so it was legal. Uh, he's reacting to it. But I don't know if that's just a nervous thing he does. He drops his hands in Max Sayo and hits his belly right there but it sure coincides with every time he gets hit to the body and let's take a look at the two losses for Edmo Seal last year he lost to many Robles via split decision and then came up short against Victor Slavinsky on the undercard of Wilder Ortiz number two in the fight against Robles he felt that he started too early and didn't have enough left down the stretch in the fight with Slavinsky he felt that he started you know too late in his opinion well, that might be true. I, I thought he came on later in the fight against Ramos, though. I mean, I thought that's what got him the split decision against Ramos. But, look, right now, uh, he's he's that experience is going to probably serve him well in this fight against a really, really tough guy in exile. And there he is going to that body. But i, I got to tell you, he drops that right hand really low. And Rocio, when he jumps in with that left uppercut to the belly, and if... If Maxile times that, he could catch him with uh, a left hook as he jumped. Ooh, good straight right hand by Maxile. Just over the midway point of the third round. You saw that left hook. I hate to interrupt. You saw that. See, uh, exactly what I was saying. Maxile tried to time that hook just like that right there. Good combination punching by Mark Maxile. Well, Joe, I think it is so apropos that Maxayo jettisoned his old trainers and then he came to learn under the guidance of Freddie Roach, which Freddie and Manny Pacquiao have been like a father-son tandem for well over a decade. Well, you know, you got to do that. Listen, sometimes your coaches run out of ideas for you uh, because they haven't been to the, you know, 
to the to the mountain yet. They haven't been at the top of the game, and they run out of ideas for you, and, and you can't advance if you don't have new ideas being fed to you. So uh, it makes sense, and Freddie's been there and back a hundred times. So. Well, I said a decade that they've been together, more like two decades if I stand corrected myself. So, yes, Freddie Roach certainly knows what it's like to cultivate a young Filipino prospect and develop them into a world champion. Oof. There you see the seven-time trainer of the year, Hall of Famer, Freddie Roach. Yeah, and while we were discussing that, Emocio just pinned Max Sayo on the ropes there. And like I said, he's got to go to the body hard. Boy, was he doing it right there. He landed like four or five hard shots in the row. We had Max Sayo pinned on the ropes. Final moments of the third. Ooh. Big right hand for Max Sayo. That is, is the biggest difference. And um, he just, uh, his defense looks tighter. Just everything about him looks better. And he's also using his energy wisely, where he didn't in the fights that we saw earlier without Freddie. Well, he was more reckless yeah. in his previous fights, and now he is a lot more disciplined and defensive-minded, but he still has his aggression. Yeah, well, you know, look, he's capable of boxing and pressing. A couple big right hands that clocked Hermosillo. Ooh. Back comes Edermosillo trying to close the distance. Edermosillo looking to snap his two-fight hey, losing hey, streak. Stop, stop. Both this is box. his third straight undefeated opponent. Well, Edermosillo is really doing some good things in there, but he better keep a real tight defense against uh, Maxile because he's he's very accurate like that. You know, he just hardly ever misses that right hand. But Edermosillo's got his hands real close and tight to his face. Now, if he puts that pressure on, he's got to do things like that. There's a big right hook, and he literally jarred back the jaw of Maxayo. He's been landing solid punches throughout this whole fight. Don't kid yourself. It's just that Maxayo's the more flamboyant-looking guy in there, and the, you know he's you know got cat-like reflexes. And, Mo, uh, uh, and Mosillo is just kind of a workman like, landed a good body shot. He worked a couple of shots to the head, and Mosillo then dropped that left uppercut right into the liver. We just saw a big left uppercut at close range that found its destination for Ed Mosillo. But they're answering back with a right to the body was Maxayo. That's right. Maxayo slipped inside the jab of Hermosillo and threw a right uppercut right to the belly. So this is starting to really sizzle between these two, the rivalry between the Philippines and Mexico on display here this evening. Well, without a doubt, I don't think we've seen the best of it yet. I think this is going to get very interesting. Uh, but but Edmosillo is doing what he should be doing. When he gets in close, he's really ripping the body, even though he just missed two shots to the head. He should forget about the head. Just keep targeting that body to slow him down for the later round so the head opens up for you. We are nearing 30 seconds to go in this fourth round. A left to the body by Edermosillo. Well, he is workmanlike and tries to pressure you to every inch of the ring, Joe. Yeah, and he loves to use the left hand. I mean, he rarely uses the hook, uh, Edermosillo. But, you know, right there, you know, he, he worked like three, four left hands right in a row. That's his power punch. That's where he feels comfortable. Ooh, see, there's that left hook from... Maxayo, but back comes yeah. Edermosillo towards the end of the fourth. Mark Maxayo, though, abilities here on FS1. 39 years ago, Alexis Arguello would defeat Ray Boom Boom Mancini by 14th round TKO. But back here in Los Angeles, the fifth round, Mark Maxayo and Rigoberto Edermosillo. Stop, stop, stop. And Joe, would you believe that Hermosillo is averaging over 84 punches thrown per round, Maxayo just 26? Well, look, you know, you heard Maxayo said he didn't like fighting southpaws in the fighter meeting. And this is the reason why. It's hard to get a rhythm. When you, when you do your best work against right-handers, you feel comfortable. Some guys don't mind fighting southpaws. 
This is a tall Southpaw Emerson with long arms. He's strong. He's determined. He puts on pressure. And, uh, you know, Max Sile doesn't think that he, you know, gels real well with Southpaws. And so it, it's hard to get combinations off on Southpaws. I've been through it with my fighters before. And that may be the explanation. Well, I think it just goes to show what are you going to favor. Is it quantity or is it quality? Well, uh, you know, at this point, it, it should be quality. You know, you can't worry about the punch numbers. You just got to worry about the accuracy and the effectiveness of what you're doing with your punches. And right now, Max Sayo, when he is throwing, he's being accurate and he's being effective. And we've seen him stun Hermosillo once or twice here. But Hermosillo is a hard guy to dissuade. He's going to keep on coming. He's definitely very tough and durable. He's going to make you work, and he realizes that this fight means everything. He had such a sense of urgency, did Ed Mosey on talking with us during the fighter meetings. Yeah, well, you know, he, he also thought that, you know, he should have won those two fights that he lost. I mean, you know, why wouldn't he? But uh, he's determined to win this fight. You can just tell by the way he's fighting. But those who are on Mark Maxayo felt as we are under a minute to go, they believe that tonight will be the coming out party for the undefeated featherweight contender from the Philippines. It's a beautiful left hook, right hand to the body by Maxayo. Came in so quickly. He's really good. But see now, he should be working a little bit short in here with uh, with Hermosillo and, and doing a little damage on the inside. Instead of just long punches or mid-range punches, when he gets inside, he should use some chopping little uh, right hands and short little uppercuts. You know, they can do damage. They don't seem like they do a lot, but they do when you're getting hit by them. Stop. Stop. See right there, he's holding on to, to Adam Seal's arm there where he could have been working. There's a big right hand, another one that connected upon Adam Seal for Mike Sayo. Final moments. We are halfway through this featherweight main event. Right. Yeah, well, here we go. Here's a little missed right hand, but he stepped in with the jab. That was an awkward effective. All right, here we go. Here's that, you know, step back and then step back and then he made a nice little turn. Just kind of what I was talking about. When you get close to a guy, let your hands go. Don't hold on and waste that time. Joe, can you talk to us about the importance of sometimes you have to show tough love to your uh, fighter as they come to the corner, as Freddie just did? Without without a doubt, that was nothing. That, 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 that wasn't, there wasn't anything tough about that. I mean... To tell you the truth, that fighter's been hit with harder things than I <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I felt more disciplined that Freddie was kind of telling him, like, there was a sense of urgency that's coming out of Well, yeah, like I said, it was an exclamation point. You know, I mean it. Let's do it. Let's start working. See, like, right in there. See, now he's not holding on. Max Isle, he got tied up there, but you saw him. He squatted down, and he threw some uppercuts into the belly of Elmo Seal. And that's what I was talking about. That's what Freddie was just talking about. you got to use the opportunity wherever you are, inside or outside, to score. And then also, Freddie was telling him, keep your defense tight. It almost felt like Freddie felt that sometimes Maxayo can get a little bit lazy and drop his hands and his guard. Well, he does it all the time. You can see him. He keeps, after he works a couple of punches, he goes down and he grabs his belt line with both hands. See him? Like right there. He's done it a hundred times tonight. It's a habit, I'm sure, that Freddie Roach and his assistant trainer, Marvin Simodi, are trying to break. But let us not forget, this is just their first fight together. They've been working together steadily for three months consecutively. Maxayo came here to the United States as we are at the midway point of the sixth round in February before COVID. Once that got going, he went back to the Philippines, returned in July to spend a full three months with Freddie Roach. Good body shots by Ed Rocio and then a nice little counter left uppercut by Maxayo. But, you know, he does have to get busier. He, he is starting to look a little bit fatigued right now, Maxayo, which means that his punches may not be as effective. And that's not good when you're fighting a guy that's uh, swarming you like Ed Seal. He's, you know, kind of being unstoppable with his pressure right now. And you got to have power to get a guy's respect, not just to walk you down like that. We'll see if Mike Sayo can find a way to gain more sustained offense as he's dealing with someone who is very much aggressive and has quite a bit of tenacity in Ed Seal. Good body shot right there. That kind of hurt Maxile right there. That little left hand of the liver. 
as he grabs his shorts again. He bent over a little bit. He still might be feeling the remnants of that liver shot, Joe. Oh, I'm telling you, this is uh, th those hurt more than you might suspect. Um, again, it doesn't take much to hurt you to the body. You, 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 End of the sixth stanza. Big right hook that connected for Matsayo. And a left hook to end the sixth, too. Okay, there's a long, kind of sloppy left hand. But you see how that right hand is down from Hermosillo, and then Maxayo can do that well. And here's that right hand, boom. I mean, he's just, he's really accurate with that. Max goes down and grabs his shorts there. Here he slips under uh, the right hand. rounds, do you think that the right hand might be hurt for Maxayo? You know, he did kind of show it to the corner. I don't know if that was just a another quirky thing he does like you know grabbing his belt line but uh yeah i noticed that too i'm very curious to see in this seventh round if maxayo starts to throw the right hand or if it might be damaged well let me tell you something even if it's hurt he'll throw it very good question but will he throw it with as much frequency well, is that, the question whether it's uh, i think the question is will he throw it with as much power you know he'll throw it when you have to just to you know to at least keep a guy off balance knowing he has to protect himself but will have any power behind it that is why he is the best in the business the legendary joe goosen educating me every single time <laughs> we get together here on fs1 ray flores joe goosen jordan plant into the seventh round of this featherweight main event mark mcsayo from the philippines Fighting here in the United States for the first time in four years. There's a straight left that found its destination for Ed Mosillo. Another one. Well, Maxile threw a right hand and missed it. Ed Mosillo slipped to his left a little bit and came back with the counter left hand, and that buzzed him. This has been a very entertaining featherweight matchup. It's a dangerous fight for both guys because both guys are really... You know, they're strong guys. These are not weak punchers. They may not be one-punch knockout punchers in this particular fight, but let me tell you, they're landing some damning, uh, damaging punches right now. Both guys. And they're certainly going to feel the effects of this fight in the morning. As you take a look at the numbers, 106 landed for Hermosillo compared to just 72 for Maxayo. That seemed a little bit low, but well, if, it was, if, if it was, Jack Reeks was completely behind it, uh, Max Isle, but I, I, that was mostly on the belt. Yeah, we heard it here at our broadcast position under a minute to go here in the seventh. Well, it's like I said in my, my, uh, my points to victory, you got to hit the body hard, and, and Animal Seal's capable of doing that with that strong left hand. And, of course, you heard his trainer telling him, you got to use, what did he say? Use the, he wants him to use the left and also give some head movement to keep his guard up. That's right, but he but the first thing he told him, he wants him to use that left hand. Yes, a lot. Absolutely. He said, use the left. It's what he was imploring him to do. Mm -hmm. There's a straight left that well, was dipped Maxayo. It was a right hand by Maxayo that was countered with a quick left hand by Adam Seal. So they both landed. They're both doing good damage here to each other. Let me tell you, both scoring good points. This is a tough one. A right hand that crashed into Hermosillo. Final moment. His moments of brilliance in the seventh. There's our right hand. Hermosillo slips. As the corner of Edmo there it is. There's them. Yeah, there's that slip and come back counter right there. That was the last. Joe Boltman has his sanctioning bodies hoping to elevate his standing and remain perfect against Rigoberto Hermosillo. Hermosillo on the opposite side looking to end his two-fight losing streak. to the body by Maxayo. Joe, at this stage of the fight, what would you like to see out of both men first with Maxayo? Well, I, I think Maxayo is just, you know, I, I think he's probably winning this fight. I don't think there's a doubt. I think he's winning the fight. Um, you know, I, I just think what Freddie told him was correct, was, you know, you got to punch in combinations. you got to stay busier than the other guy. And uh, do damage when you when you hit him. You know, you try to hurt the guy when you hit him. On the other side with uh, Animal Seal, well, I, you know, at this stage of the game, I, 
I would want, if I were in the corner, I'd want you to win every second of the last few rounds you got, without a doubt. Make it clear that you're the winner of these rounds because you're probably behind right now. So you got to put complete pressure on, keep your hands busy, and try to, you know, put Maxile down with something, or at least hurt him with something, where it's obvious to the judges. Just moments ago, Hermosillo just ate a lethal left hook on the chin by Maxile, and he ate it well and just kept coming forward. That's right, and then he landed right as you were speaking, he landed a great liver shot with a little left uppercut to the belly, and, well, you know, Maxile really reacted to it, but he's in such great shape, he's able to shake it off. You know, if you're in, you know, inferior shape, you're not going to be able to shake off those body shots that he's getting hit with. See right there. See, that's Maxile being busy and close. That's what Freddie wanted. You know, he landed a couple punches. He turned. He moved out. Angled up, and then got busy again. So. That's, see, that's stuff that wins you the rounds. Maxayo started to really target the body in these past 45 seconds, Joe. Yeah, look, Maxayo will hit anything that you give him. You give him the head or the body, he's going to he's gonna find it. He's, see, he's got a variety of punches where I think Aaron Maceo really over-depends on that left hand right there. See, so that's three in a row right there with his left hand. Finally, a hook. Four. So four left hands to one hook. Two hooks now, one that missed. Where Max Isle, look, he goes to the body, he's got left hooks, right hands, straight right hands, hooks to the head, and he blends them all together in combination. So, you know, he's a, he's a little harder to predict. We told you when Mexico and the Philippines get together in boxing, it is no shortage of entertainment, and thus far that has been the case. Both men pushing each other in our main event. Outlanding Maxayo 48 to 28. When it comes to Maxayo, he has land, not landed more than four body shots in any round until the eighth when he landed nine. So clearly from a body punching standpoint, it favors the Mexican in Hermosillo. Yeah, and, and look, I think that was that. Oh, good, good, good combo. See, and there we go. You got. And that is not a knockdown. No, turn around, box. No, he could have had he not bumped him. You see, Maxayo kind of bumped him a little bit. Couple of right hands that spray Hermosillo by Maxayo. But Maxayo's really, he must have gotten a big push from the corner from Freddy right now because uh, he came out blasting as if he needed to do this and Freddy probably insisted on it. But man, he came out of the shoot really fast, Maxayo, with some really sharp, sharp punches. Freddy might have stop, lit a fire stop. under Maxayo. When it comes to going the distance, Maxayo's 4 and 0 past eight rounds. So no stranger to fighting long stretches of fights as Mark Maxayo undefeated after eight rounds. I mean, he's undefeated, period, but even more so having yeah. the experience of going 10 and 12 rounds. And, and right now, look, Maxayo is blending a little boxing with a little pressure. He's not getting hit, but he's landing all the damaging punches this round. Good left hook. But Amrosil landed a nice little left hand at the same time. And here Amrosil got in close and landed a few body shots. But it's been all Max Isle this round. Just over the halfway point of the ninth. Ooh, you can hear those body shots. Through the body. Oh my. Somebody grunting in there. I don't know if it was Jack Reese, if it was uh, you know, Amrosil. But uh, let me tell you, that was a beautiful left hand that he threw in there. Max Isle, though, to be undeterred as he looks for his opening. Maxayo making his debut with Freddy Roach as his trainer also. This is his first fight under Manny Pacquiao Promotions, his new promoter. He was away from the ring for 16 months from November of 2017 to March of 2019 due to promotional issues, but that has now been rectified. Vicious left hook for Maxayo. Boy, it's been all Maxayo this round. Let me tell you something. Not only has he been doing very well offensively, defensively, he's really used some good matrix, uh, you know, style uh, movements uh, to avoid punches from Edmo Seal. So, I, you know, I give him a lot of credit. Just like that. Underneath punches, pulled out nice. Made Edmo Seal fall short with his punches. Go over his head. He's doing really well in this round. There's right a left, up left uppercut by Maxayo, followed by a right as he puts together 
November of 2017 to March of 2019 due to promotional issues, but that has now been rectified. Vicious left hook for Max Ayo. Boy, it's been all Max Ayo this round. Let me tell you something. Not only has he been doing very well offensively, defensively, he's really used some good matrix uh, you know, style uh, movements uh, to avoid punches from Adam Seal. So, I, you know, I give him a lot of credit. Just like that. Underneath punches, pulled out nice. Made Adam Seal fall short with his punches. Go over his head. He's doing really well in this round. Well, There's a left, left uppercut by Masayo. Followed by a right. As he puts together more combinations, does the undefeated Filipino featherweight. But back comes Adam Seal. Jack Reese. Yeah, you're going to see they bang bodies here, if I'm not mistaken. Right. There is a good left hook. And then see everyone. Nice little rally again. But see, pulled away on this uh, fight. And um, is, is comfortably ahead right now. So, uh, yeah, I, I just think Freddie wanted him to... You know, don't be an underachiever in this fight. You know, use all of your skills, use all the training, and let it all go right now. Why waste any of it? Talk about motivation in between the ninth and the tenth from Hall of Fame trainer Freddie Roach. Just over the halfway point, a left hook by Maxaya, but answering back with the left of his own is Adam Seal. It's the boy. This has been a terrific fight, Joe, between two men who are giving their own fight inside that ring. I'm going to tell you something, Maxayo, the longer he's with Freddie and that group, the more he, this is only his first fight with him. Let me just tell you something, he's going to be somebody to I think Maxayo really has to get in there and bang it out with him like this. But I think Freddie saw that he had him real hurt last round. It, uh, he had him hurt, uh, and that he, he Max out, you know, is, is still got the availability and the power to to, to knock out uh, Aramisio or do a lot of damage. I, I really don't think Freddie thinks he's behind. Joe, you hear it thrown around in boxing. Can he kick it into another gear? I think Freddie's trying to get Max Sayo to really step his foot on the gas to try to get out of there because he saw moments of that in the ninth. Well, I, I think Freddie's done that for the past three or four rounds. That's why, you know, I think uh, uh, Max uh, 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 Max Sayo uh, pulled away on this uh, fight and um, is, is comfortably ahead right now. So, uh, yeah, I, I just think Freddie wanted him to, you know, don't be an underachiever in this fight. You know, use all of your skills, use all the training, and let it all go right now. Why waste any of it? Talk about motivation in between the ninth and the 10th from Hall of Fame trainer Freddie Roach. Just over the halfway point, a left hook by Max Sayo, but answering back with the left of his own is Adam Seal. The boy. This has been a terrific fight, Joe, between two men who are giving their own right. fight inside that ring. I'm going to tell you something, Maxio. The longer he's with Freddie and that group of guys in that gym, the more he, this is only his first fight with them. Let me just tell you something, he's going to be somebody to be reckoned with because he has got a lot of skills defensively as well as offensively. Quick hands, powerful. Can slip, can turn, can pivot. I like him. Max Sayo, a big right that momentarily wobbled Adam Seal. Max Sayo has stated in the near future he wants the champions at 126. For Adam Seal, I would love to see him again without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Vicious body punching between these two. Well, that was a nice little flurry by Adam Seal, but uh, I think a little too, too little too late, you know, we got 10 seconds here. That ends what was a very entertaining Seal Gold The Distance show. This one was entertainment without a doubt. Look, I mean, this is a, this is a, there was a lot of back and forth, and Adam Seal might have been a little busier, but he certainly wasn't as accurate and damaging as Maxio was. So, uh, you know, you had a lot of stuff going on in this fight, but it, this was top shelf uh, fighting right here by both guys. Oh, there.
when it comes to the punch that. Yeah, listen, I mean, you, you kind of summed it up in that last round. They both went for broke in that last round here. But look, there was... Uh, you know, over 1,200 punches thrown here, it looks like. Gentlemen, having completed the full 10 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judge at ringside, Rudy Badagan scores it 100 to 90 in favor of Maxayo. Judge Dr. Lou Moret scores it 96-94 for Hermosillo. And Judge Zachary Young scores it 96-94 for your winner by split decision. And still undefeated, Mark McNeil.